Sziasztok! Hi, this is the Mass Vlog. In the last episode, we got to know the church where the Mass takes place. This time, we're going to talk about what you should do when you enter the church and how exactly the Mass begins. When we step inside the church, we make the sign of the cross. With our right hand, we touch our forehead, our heart, our left shoulder, and then our right shoulder. This way, we take Jesus' cross upon ourselves. And because we say, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, this is already a prayer. We are doing something in the name of the Holy Trinity, in the name of God. The cross has both a horizontal and vertical plane. The vertical plane links us to God, while the horizontal plane links us to each other. It calls us to a sort of collective prayer. We might dip our fingers into holy water and then make the sign of the cross. The holy water font can be found next to the church entrance. When doing so, we can ask God to wash away our sins and cleanse our souls. We also genuflect as a way of greeting Jesus Christ, who is present in the Eucharist. By bending our knee, we give up half of our height to him. It is a sign of humility, after all. We are such tiny creatures before God. To genuflect properly, the right knee should touch the ground, so the sign of the cross is a prayer, and the genuflection is a greeting. After we've done both, we sit down in a pew or a chair. It's good to spend a little time in silence before Mass begins. We can use this time to set aside our worries, reflect on how we spent the last week, and focus on our coming encounter with Christ during the Mass. Let's talk a bit about the different postures, because at certain times in the Mass we stand up, kneel down, or just sit. What do each of these signify? We spend most of the Mass sitting. This way we can concentrate on what is being said, what is being read, or what is happening at the moment. When we stand, we express our respect. We do this at the start of the Mass, during the Lord's Prayer, or other times. While standing, as during the Gospel reading, we can concentrate better on what we're hearing. Kneeling is an expression of humility and adoration. Of course, if someone's knees ache, they can simply stand, expressing the same respect as by kneeling. There is a special position that occurs rarely. This is prostration. On Good Friday, when we're remembering Jesus' death on the cross, we prostrate ourselves to express Jesus' total self-giving to the Father, as well as our own gratitude that he has died for us. We can also express many things with our hands. In prayer, we usually fold our hands. It helps us to concentrate, to pay more attention to the prayer. We priests use a variety of gestures during the Mass. One of these is the so-called Oran's position. We can find such depictions from as early as the first century in the catacombs. In this position, the palms face each other, yet the arms are spread wide, expressing openness to God. Mass can be celebrated by an ordained priest or bishop. An ordained deacon can read the gospel, preach, and help during communion. We also need a lector who reads the scriptures. He or she is the reader. An acolyte can help distribute the Eucharist, and the cantor leads the people in song, sometimes while playing the organ, and sometimes a cappella without instruments. His work may be aided by a choir or a scholar. This helps more people participate in singing. And the sacristan's job is to prepare for Mass. He sets up the altar, the vestments, and everything else needed for Mass. The altar servers also help at Mass, taking care of all other tasks near the altar. So the people are waiting in silence for the Mass to start. When the bell rings, we stand up and the entrance song begins, during which the assistants and the priest enter the sanctuary, then the priest approaches the altar and venerates it with a kiss. Why does he do this? For two reasons. One is that many altars contain a relic. Because in the early church, the Mass was often celebrated over the graves of martyrs, it is a kind of greeting, signifying the unity and the community of the saints. The other reason is reflected in one of the prefaces or introductory prayer. It says that Christ is the priest, the altar, and the sacrificial lamb. He himself is the paschal sacrifice, through which we have gained eternal life. From this point on, every liturgical bow faces the altar on which Mass is being celebrated. Some Masses begin with an entrance procession, the procession is led by the processional cross, followed by two candles and the gospel book. On major holy days, the procession includes burning incense. With its smoke, the priest incenses the altar. The smoke of the incense, as it rises, symbolizes our prayer. As the psalm says, 
Let my prayer be counted as incense before you. It concentrates the space, and the smell of the incense also enhances the devotional atmosphere. Most churches have both a main altar and a versus populum altar. Up until the Second Vatican Council, the priest said Mass in Latin, his back towards the people, thus expressing his role as a mediator. He is the one praying for the people, and everyone is facing in the same direction. Ever since the reforms of the Second Vatican Council, the priest usually celebrates Mass in the language of the people. The altar is now in the center, so the priest can celebrate Mass facing the people, expressing the community in which we all share. Mass begins with the sign of the cross. Then the priest greets the people. May the Lord be with you. To this we answer, and with your spirit. This dialogue already shows that the Mass is not a performance, with some people performing, while the rest observe passively. The Mass is a communal offering. I too am present. I take an active part in it, in joining the singing and the prayer, and we all are praying together for everyone. Every Mass can have an intention. Someone asks me to pray for him because he has an exam tomorrow, I can do that. Someone asks me to pray for their recovery from illness, I can do that too. But the Holy Mass is itself the most perfect prayer. That's why we offer it for the living, for the dead, for a good intention, or in thanksgiving. If you have an intention for which you'd like to have a Mass said, find your local priest or pastor and ask him to say an upcoming Mass for your intention. At such times, it is often customary to offer a stipend, that is, a financial contribution, as part of the sacrifice of the Mass. That's all the time we have for today. Next time, we'll continue with the penitential rites.